Fueled by Deathcast. Uh, like nobody's calling me up to try and sing a few tracks, believe me. Yeah, but, but they are calling you up to play drums, from what I hear. Who's calling me to play? I mean, I've I've sat in with some people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, sitting in with these all these people, I got to sit in with. It's just like they've already jammed with a zillion musicians. Yeah. And what I found, I didn't realize that musicians listen to so much comedy and watch stand up specials on the road that it's cool for a goof for them to play Highway to Hell with that <laughs> guy from Comedy Central or whatever. You know what I mean? So, yeah. um, but it's definitely, it's been definitely been fun for me, man. You know? Well, when we went out and um, talked with Dave, uh, with, uh, Dave, he was talking about how he surprised you. Um, at a show once, having you play drums and did not tell you that he was going to bring Slash and Duff from Guns N' Roses on stage yeah, oh. until you actually were on stage with them. And we got yeah. his side of the story of that, of, of how he surprised you with that. But like, what was going through your head as, like you said, just you know, a comedian just having a good time playing some, playing some drums and literally Slash walks on stage? Like, what, what, How does that even translate? Oh, I uh, well to give people a backstory. I was going to play Highway to Hell. Um, Dave's always doing benefits. You know, him and his wife are very like you know they're just awesome people. So it was a benefit for this school. So my kid goes to public school, Uh and every year, uh, well before I would started at the public school, uh, my friend Donovan would put together a band, like an all star band, to play for the parents at the beginning of every year to get them like into like fundraising and all this kind of shit. Okay, smart. So I did it then because I grew up in LA. I went to public school yeah. and it's specifically to fund like the art and music and library yeah. and, and gym teachers at the school. Yeah. Like that money pays for that stuff at the school up in Laurel Canyon. And so I was like, yeah, you know, I'm totally into it. I'll play, you know, whatever. And it was way up in the, in the Hollywood Hills. Mm-hmm. So high up you could see the valley and you could see, you know, like Hollywood, which was incredible. Whoa. And so then it became my job to put together the band to play the parents like the thing. fundraiser. I, wow. So the first year I had to like bring the band in, I brought Slash and Duff, right? <laughs> Why not? Why not, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we're up there and he goes, come up during the day, you know, we'll run the song. So we play Highway to Hell, you know, it's straightforward type of thing. No, no crazy Phil's, Phil Rudd, right? Yeah. Yeah, at first I asked him, he's like, oh yeah, I'll do it. And then, you know, it came close. It was like Thursday and I'm like, you know, dude, you want to do it? And he's like, oh, I, yeah, you know, he gets nervous. He's like, oh, I don't want to embarrass myself. I'm like, dude, you'll be fine. Yeah, I know you could do it. Yeah. You can come to sound check. You can play, blah, blah. Right. He's like, all right, cool. He comes to sound check and Chaney's playing bass and me and Andrew are playing guitar. Frankie sings. So I sit down, we knock it out and he goes, are you th- sound good? I say, yeah, you know, sounds good, man. That's how I'm going to play it. And I didn't tell him that I was going to have Duff and Slash play on that song. Instead of Chris and Andrew, him. I didn't tell him <laughs> on purpose. Yeah, because so, <laughs> I didn't want him to get freaked out. And right. I wanted him to do it. Right. You know. So that night I show up, and uh, the real drummer, like he plays with Blue Man Group, like you know, reading charts. Like this guy, this guy's a player. <laughs> yeah, He's in the business, right? So I'm going. All right, I'm probably going to go up like third, fourth song in. Let's get the jerk off comedian out of the way. <laughs> And I see I'm um, like third to last song. So that was the first point where I was just like, this mm-hmm. doesn't make any sense. And then I'm watching them play like the who. And this guy on drums is doing all the Keith Moon shit. Oh. And he's crushing it. <laughs> and I'm like, why Why are they having me go on after this? This doesn't make any sense. Is this, is, is Dave like breaking my balls here? And so I, I, so I see Bill and he comes up and he kind of sneaks like during, you know, right before that song, mm-hmm. he sneaks on, he's sitting at the drum set and I'm like, oh, you know, I'm going to introduce my friend, you know, Bill Burr, blah, 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 playing drums. And so finally, um, they play the song, finish the song before me. And I literally sneak up on the stage mm-hmm. and, and, and they go, Hey, ladies and gentlemen, we have a, uh, a guest going to sit in on drums. Uh, stand-up comedian, please welcome Bill Burr. And I got like the golf clap. Like nobody knows who I am. And whatever. Playing drums, you can hide behind the cymbals and shit if I screw it up. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, and then uh, I have two other guests. And, and it turns out that Slash went to that elementary school when he was a kid. Oh, oh weird. Gosh. Which I didn't know till that night. Oh, my God. And so then. Alumni. And as he's introing me, I see 
people are just walking off the stage. It was only the bass player and another guitar player, I believe, walked off. But in my world, it was like 10 people walked off stage. <laughs> I was like, what's going on? And he goes, and uh, we got another couple special guests. So immediately I'm thinking like, wait, what's going on here? We, we didn't rehearse this because I'm outside my comfort zone. I, 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 drums is a hobby, obviously. So he goes, please welcome from Guns N' Roses, Duff McKagan and Slash. And I was I was like, what the fuck? And I just saw him coming up. So then I introduced them and he, so they they start walking up. And I look back, dude, and I see his, he just was like, <laughs> <laughs> like literally just had his head down. Yes. And we talked afterwards and he's like, dude, I just couldn't even lift my head up. Cause if I did, I would just become a fucking teenage kid again. The only way to describe them, it was like two giant redwoods. They just look, that's what I kept thinking. It was like giants, like yeah. in my mind. Oh, and I was sitting down looking up at them. How does Duff is tall anyways. Yeah. And I think Slash is a little bit taller than I am. And they just looked, they looked gigantic to me. That's all I remember. And I had met Duff once at the comedy store and he's just like, Hey man, how you doing? <laughs> shakes my hand slash shakes. And you don't understand like how big guns and roses was to me. We, we went to dinner one night and then we talked about it because he's uh, a massive guns and roses fan. Yeah. And he talked about how when he was a teenager, he used to play, uh, play along with Appetite front mm -hmm. to back yeah. like fucking the whole thing yeah. I was like the first guy of, uh, in my group of friends that were like you gotta check out this band like one of my big credits uh, in my, my early adulthood was dude Burr was listening to these guys in 87 you know cause it didn't come out until 88 and that was like, I, like that, was this, that was an IMDB credit for me <laughs> so, and I used to jam all the time in my parents basement and we used to play uh, Highway to Hell, and we used to play Guns N' Roses stuff. We used to play Welcome to the Jungle. We played My Michelle, Mr. Brownstone, and all that. And I remember one of my brothers would be standing here playing guitar. My other brother would be standing there playing bass, and we'd play Guns N' Roses, and we'd play Highway to Hell. Now, here I am, 30 years in the future, playing Highway to Hell that I used to play with my brothers, and instead of my brother John there, it's Duff. And instead of Philip, it's, it's, it's Slash. Oh my god! And then Kushner's there, so essentially you have the entire Velvet Revolver. Velvet Revolver, right? And I'm Matt Sorum now. <laughs> so uh, this all goes through my head in like 0.8 seconds. Right. However long it takes someone to walk on stage, say hello, and then just slash turns around and just goes ba na na, da na na. <laughs> Dude, I literally couldn't feel my legs. <laughs> da na na, da na na, da na da na, da na na. <laughs> I'm like, what? It was nuts. So he played, but yeah. he just like was looking down the whole time. <laughs> oh, man. And I'm like turning around, like looking at him like, like dude, you're in Velvet Revolver. <laughs> dude, you're doing it. And, yeah. And, and he just like looked up for a second. And he got, like, had this big grin on his face. And I went Kushner and, and uh, Frankie kept turning around. Just they didn't, They just kept looking at my face, laughing at me. So uh, the song ends. You know, there's a, you know, the, what it stopped highway to hell and he's, and I'm going down all the way. And then they got to turn around and look at the drummer to start the cymbal wash. And I, that was the time when, when Duff and Slash all turn around, and look at me. And I was just like, oh my God, they're looking. <laughs> I almost forgot what I was supposed to do. And then fortunately I got out of it and then I got off stage and then they played another two uh, Guns N' Roses song with the, with the real drummer who crushed it. <laughs> and, um, I got off stage. Uh, I was walking away and Duff came up to me and he said, hey man, he goes, Slash really liked you playing. And I was like, get the fuck out of here, get out of here. You know, I figured he knew I was a con, but he didn't know, he had no idea who I was. And he said, yeah, he, he liked your playing. So I was like, oh my God, it's the greatest night ever. I got to meet him. He was cool as shit. I said, hey, I'm actually a stand-up comic. And he laughed. He goes, well, you should play drums, man. You sounded good. <laughs> so I am like at this point floating. So then I leave the venue because the show's over, and I do the most unrock and roll thing ever. I get into a Prius <laughs> and drive down the hill, literally screaming. He gets in his car. He had a Prius at the time. He pulls out, like... Remember him talking about that. His funny. Prius? Yeah. How do you fit your drums in a Prius, by the way? <laughs> oh, uh, they, they were like... They, I was sitting in somebody else's drum kit. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> you can't fit drums in a Prius. Screaming like some little schoolgirl who got to see Elvis, and I went... 
down to the uh, the comedy store, went out back because I was meeting my buddy Joe Bartnick to smoke a cigar, and I was telling them the story, and they were just all jaws on the ground. Someone had given me a video of it, right? Okay. So it's basically him playing with Slash and Duff, and right. and so I sent him the video. Yeah. And so he's at the comedy store, he gets the video, and he's just like, and they were like, hey, so are you going to go up? He's like, nope. I'm not going to fuck this up. This is like the best evening of my life. <laughs> the fucking greatest thing has happened to me in the last 23 years. And I'm not going to fuck it up by going on stage and fucking, you know, ruin <laughs> yeah. this high. Right, yeah. right. So he's just like showing guys, you know, other comedians backstage, the video of him playing with That's Duff and Slash. That's so funny. I remember when I walked in the comedy store, like, hey, Bill, you want to go on stage? I was like, no, I don't. <laughs> nope. No, I don't. I ain't going to top that. So I went in the back and I smoked a cigar. And as I told him, uh, Dave sent me some video of it and they were all like blown away. It was like one of those nights she didn't want to end. So at two in the morning, I get in my Prius and I go to leave. I'm like, this is the greatest night ever. So I'm pulling out of the comedy store and I had to stop because of traffic. And as I stop, I hear a knock on my window and I look over, drop dead gorgeous woman. I'm like, this is just the greatest night ever. I'm going to roll down the window. She's going to be like, oh my God, I'm such a fan. I can't believe I missed you tonight, blah, blah. Dude, I roll the window down. She's hammered. She sticks her head like, three quarters of her body into the window. She just goes, are you Felipe, our Uber driver? <laughs> and I just laughed. I go, ah, uh, no, no. And then it registered. She's looking at my, you know, Irish mixed face. I'm as far, <laughs> as far from a Felipe as possible. I go, no, I'm not. She kind of laughed and I laughed and she, and that was the moment I turned back into a pumpkin and then <laughs> drove home in my Prius and that was it. 